right. So sorry for that, guys. Since, as you guys all know, we only have a limited uh, time for Zoom meeting, like maximum 40 minutes only. So since I didn't avail the premium version, so yeah, we'll be having part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, and so on and so forth. We need more part, how many meetings left. Okay, so we'll just wait for the others. Okay, so while waiting for the others, is there anyone here who has a question or clarification so far? Ah, uh, no. So Mr. Jeremiah has a question, sir, but we will be utilizing all of the eight hours today. No. So basically, no. So supposedly, if we have meeting last week, Monday, so we will only meet 10 to 15 minutes. We will only discuss the module one. And then for the Thursday, we will own, yeah, we will also only consume maybe 10 to 15 minutes just to uh, give you uh, details about module two. Okay, but since you wasn't able to meet last meeting, okay, so we will finish uh, uh module three today. So yeah, we have discussed module one and two for the part one, and then module two. For the uh, module two, part two, for the uh, module three, and maybe part three and four for us to be able to finish the discussion. So, I'm not sure, maybe, yeah, maybe we will uh, finish this one at exactly 2 20 or 2 30. And then the remaining time that we have until 7.30 will be your uh, time to finish all of the laboratories and the activities that were given. So let's wait one more minute for the others. So again, guys, if you haven't ate your lunch yet, so you can eat while listening, listening and watching.
Where are the others? Anyway, okay. So let us now continue our discussion. So the others that who are not here yet, so they will just catch up to us. Okay. So again, I apologize for that one. I wasn't able to monitor the time anymore. So you know, uh, we're having a discussion. Anyway. So any questions so far regarding with Hopper before we proceed to the cracker? Hello. Yoo-hoo. You guys still there? Monster. 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 Okay. So could you guys? Could you guys open your camera if it's okay so that I just know that you guys are really there? You know, just for me to become a little bit more happy okay, while explaining things. So, so to those who doesn't have a camera okay, or if their camera is not working, so it's okay. So to those uh, others only who have their cameras, Okay, so in that in that way, I will be more inspired in explaining things. Okay, so so that I could see your expressions or your faces while I'm talking. All right. So again, for the black hat hacker, so this is what we call the cracker. Okay? This is the hacker who is doing bad things. Okay? So we are, the, we are we have the intention to destroy the data, steal information or spread some malicious action, okay? Or spread a virus. And then we also have here script TV, which I admit that I am one of them, okay? Script TV. So when I see script TV, they, but I, I don't intend, okay? I don't intend to destroy data. I just use some hacking uh, application. You can say that it's a pre-made application for us to be able to do some hacking things, okay? So yeah. So you that as a cracker, but does not have the technical skills and knowledge. So meaning I'm not really a hacker, okay? I just use the application which we have created, okay? So the application that we have created will just, you know, uh, make their work uh, faster instead of doing that one manually step by step, okay? So script TV is a person who's just using application that can be found on the internet, can be found on the YouTube, can be found on the any articles or any other groups about hackings, okay? So, oh, bakit nawala yung mga camera nyo? All right, sige. Okay lang yan. So, it is often used for written hacking and cracking programs to break into computers and networks. All right. So, is there anyone here who have used uh, an application to hack your neighbor's Wi-Fi? or to get, or to gain access. Okay. All right. Okay, so wag mo nang i-open yung kamo kung pag gano'n. So may nag-message ha. So hindi ko na lang babasahin. May ginagawa daw kasi siya na personal. So sa mga, okay, to those who are not doing other things, and if you guys can open your camera. So I really appreciate that one. So that only means that you guys are really listening carefully and then watching carefully. So, all right. So again, going back to my question, is there anyone here who have used an application to uh, get their neighbor's Wi-Fi or to gain access to their uh, you know, Wi-Fi? Anyone? Okay, don't be ashamed, okay? So even me, I, I've done it a lot of times, especially if the Wi-Fi of our neighbors are PLDP, so that is one of the uh, easiest router that we can have. Okay? So Mr. Jeremiah is one of them, one of us rather. Okay. And Mr. Ronald also, and I guess Mr. Esguer also have already done this one. So when I was in high school. All right, so yeah. So Not yet, sure, but paturo. Okay, so uh, I, I don't do those uh, things anymore. Anyway, so if you want to learn more about, you know, how to hack, 
your neighbor's Wi-Fi, you can always search on YouTube. Okay. Or actually, uh, the easiest way is to dive into deep web or dark web. But it's not advisable okay, since you know, going in or diving into dark web or deep web is super dangerous. So do not do that one, okay? Just, just stick with whatever we have right now, okay? So if you don't have internet, just ask your neighbors politely. So, uh, ma'am, sir, can I have the password of your Wi-Fi? I'm willing to pay 10 pesos per day, man. So they might let you gain access with your Python. Anyway, so enough with uh, script kitty. So we have here corporate spies and espionage. Uh, so from the word itself, okay, it is a spy to the corporates or companies. So unscrupulous companies or an honest companies hire uh, spies uh, for them to gain data okay, or to have uh, advantage when it comes to you know competitions okay so they do this one they do this one you know to maybe win over uh, to their uh, enemies or to their uh, call this one uh, rivals yeah so it's very very uh, common nowadays especially if your company is, is about technology but of course if we have corporate spice we also have other mm -hmm. hackers whom they are going uh, to protect their company. So later on, we will discuss more about that. But for corporate spice, this one is also under Black Hat Hack. And then we also have here an ethical employees. This one is uh, not really under hacker, but they are just the people who will uh, exploit the uh, security of your company. So from the word itself, an ethical, so maybe this person is really, really angry to their boss or to the company that he's working with. And yeah, he just wants to exploit, he just want to, you know, relieve his anger and exploit the weakness of the uh, company, um, maybe leak some important uh, information or confidential information, or maybe that person or employee is just being unethical. Okay. Like, he doesn't have sports mention. Okay. And then we have here cyber extortion. So once you read the word cyber extortion, extortion is, so you can say that in real life, they are hostages. Okay. Or, yeah, I'm right, hostages. They are the ones doing some hostage. Or they host, yeah, they hostage someone in exchange of money. Okay. So they do this one, you know, to our computers also. Like for example, they can lock our computer. So once they're inside our computer, they can lock it, and then they will uh, give you a note wherein you have to pay some amount of money to this bank account. And then once you have paid the amount that they are asking, then that's them that they will unlock your computer. Okay. So that's uh, how they work. Okay. Demands payment to stop an attack. And we also have here cyber terrorists. So the only difference with cyber extortionists and cyber terrorists is cyber terrorists is more on a bigger organizations. So cyber terrorists is just maybe a person who hates the government. Okay, so that is why we he wanted to bring down the website of SSS, bring down the website of Pagibit, bring down the Password, they keep, they keep saying password. Bring down the website. Okay, bring down the website of our government. Uh, yeah, government websites here in the Philippines. Okay, or it could be for political uh, reasons. Okay, so of course they will be hired by someone, and then uh, they will accept money from that person, and then of course maybe he will bring down someone's computer or someone's. Uh, website, etc., etc. Okay, and then we have here cyber warfare. We're in, uh, in real world. We have, uh, World War One, World War Two, etc., etc. Right, and we also have World War. Uh, but we call that one cyber warfare, in terms of cyber world. Okay, so it's an attack whose goal ranges from disabling a government's computer 
uh, network to crippling a certain country. So one good example of this one is the USA and uh, Russia, or in, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure, but this is just uh, a rumor, or in uh, the website of USA is always getting hacked by Russian people or Russian hacker, and that they also leak some of the confidential files of the FBI, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so that is one good example of cyber warfare. So there's, yeah, there's a war between those two uh, two countries in terms of cyber world. All right. So any questions so far up to this point? So, answer. so I would like to hear your honest opinion, honest feedback. Were you guys able to understand uh, what I'm trying to explain? Or am I too fast? Okay. So, yes, sir, coming from Mr. Esquera. But how about the others? Were you guys able to follow? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, then. So just let me know if there is a part that is, you know, uh, quite uh, unclear. Okay. So that we can repeat it again and then discuss it again. Anyway, so let's now move on to internet and network attacks. So right now, let me uh, give you guys an idea. The one that we are always saying virus is just uh, one type of a malicious software. So the category of that one, the main category of that one is actually called malware. Okay, And then below that is the virus, Trojan virus, a Trojan horse, a worm, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So the main uh, category of those unwanted application to our computer is called malware. Okay, So here are the types of malware. So we have the virus, we have the worm, Trojan horse, rootkit, spyware, and then other. So let's start with virus first. So a virus is, of course, a potentially damaging program. So you guys know where this one. So the intention of that program is to destroy or to alter or, uh, you know, or to control someone's computer without permission, et cetera, et cetera. So anything that is happening uh, that under the virus is really, really bad. And for the worm, so if we have a 100% destroying application, we also have worm wherein you could say that this one is less harmful. Like you could say 100% for the virus and then 50% for the worm. Oops. Okay. So it's harmful, but 50% only. Why? Because this one is just a program that copies itself repeat, repeatedly. Okay. Wherein it will not destroy your data. It will just keep on reproducing uh, a data, okay, or a certain uh, file, wherein let's say you have used your computer for two days, three days. So as time goes by, we'll we'll keep on uh, uh, slow, slow down your computer as time goes by, and then until the time that you'll reach the shutting down of your computer, because you have already full uh, memory, okay, or full of resources. And oops, wherein your computer can't handle the uh, uh, loads or the uh, storage that keeps on coming to your computer or that keeps on, uh, call this one, spreading. Okay, So we call that one firm, right? And then we also have Trojan Horse, which is also under uh, malware. So this is a program that hides within or looks like a legitimate program. So unlike a virus or worm, Trojan horse does not replicate itself to other computers or devices. So you can see that this one is not uh, not easily leak, or yeah, it will not easily uh, affect other computer unless you uh, execute it also onto that computer. But this one, as long as you're not uh, executing it on the other computer, then the other computer is still safe. But the problem with Trojan horse, as time goes by, uh, it might destroy your entire 
computer. Your entire computer. Maybe your uh your hard disk only. So your processor is still, still safe, but your uh maybe hard disk or hard drive uh, might get damaged. <laughs> so you can see that this one is one of the strongest uh, malware. Okay, so this one is quite dangerous actually. Okay, so you need it will uh give you a lot of problems, especially in buying a new hardware. Okay. And then you're going to have a hard time in uh, uh, recovering the data that you've lost from your uh, hard drive or hard disk. Okay. And then for the rootkit, so this one is uh, not really harmful, but rootkit is one of the most common application of a hacker use. Okay. Why? Because a rootkit is a program that hides in a computer or a mobile device and allows someone from a remote location to take full control of the computer or device. Wherein, when we say take full control, meaning, uh, of course, they can, con aside from they can control your computer, they can also gain access to your uh, documents, pictures, videos, etc., etc., and everything. Okay. So, if we have important information under your computer, then, and if you have rootkit, then you're doomed, okay? You know, you're now in big trouble, okay? So uh, you will get this one if you keep on downloading uh, pirated applications or pirated videos or pi anything that is pirated, okay? So yeah, just scan your computer if it can still scan uh, this kind of malware. But I doubt that uh, it will be easy, especially if the scanner or the antivirus that you're using is just a free version okay, or just a crack version. Okay. So if you really want to avoid having a rootkit, then I highly suggest you guys to avail the premium version of uh, any uh, famous uh, antivirus company. So AVG, Avira, Avas. Kaspersky, Norton, etc. So it's up to you. And then we have here the spyware. So you can say that this is the uh, mini version of a rootkit. So if a rootkit can have a full control, spyware is just uh, a program wherein it can spy on your computer. Like, yeah, they cannot control your computer, but they can still collect important uh, files or important uh, data. From your computer, all right. So from the word itself, spyware. Okay. It also hides secretly to your computer. And then adware is the most uh, safe malware. Okay. So why did I say that this is safe? That is because this one is just an advertisement. Okay. So this one is very common when it comes to website, wherein we have to watch this advertisement first or you have to see this advertisement first before you can proceed to watch a video or to watch an anime or anything that you are there for okay so that is their way to gain some money okay since they are providing their service to you for free then of course the way for them to earn the money is by you know uh, doing some advertisement All right, so are we clear so far? Is there a question regarding with types of malware? None, sir. Okay, so how about the others? Do you guys have a question so far? None, sir. All right, so again, if you guys have a question, feel free to ask me anything, right? Okay, so how virus spread uh, via email message? So we have two scenario, where in the other one, so here first, of course. So we have here the virus and then the creator or the authors of that virus, and then they uh, send it randomly to the uh, email. So anyone that maybe they know. And uh, we have two people who have received the virus. So the other people right here, the step three, uh, open the email, wherein the email now is uh, 
executed and then his laptop now is uh, you know, infected and has a virus now. But the other one didn't open the email. That is because he cannot recognize the sender. Like he didn't know who is that sender. So just to be safe, he didn't read it okay? or he didn't open it. Okay? So uh, as you can see right here, so even though he has, uh, uh, yeah, he has received or he has a virus, but he didn't execute or open it, then you're still uh, okay. All right, so some virus needs to be activated or needs to be executed before uh, it can uh, destroy uh, your data or your computer. All right, so that's how a virus break. Then we have here internet and network attacks. So mostly, uh, some hackers use botnet, or let's say most hackers use botnets. So why do they use botnets? So botnet is just actually a computer wherein they planted, okay, let's say they planted an application without you knowing it. Okay, like for example, my computer could be a botnet right now under uh, someone's uh, application or bot. Okay. So they use this one, you know, just to gain access with my computer to uh, get my IP address and then to use my IP address uh, to act as another uh, army uh, on his account. So why does he do that? So in some uh, website or in some uh, protocols, we have this open source, okay, like Wikileaks and Wikipedia, like everyone can actually change uh, a certain information on that website. But for you to be able to change the information officially, uh, we're going to have a votation. Okay? So we have accept and then reject. So of course, majority wins. If majority votes that this one is reliable, this one is okay, like, yeah, they're okay to change this, they're okay to update this one, then yeah, they'll be successful, successful in changing, changing that one just by using a botnet, especially that, you know, uh, spreading a botnet is very easy as long as there is one computer that is already uh, infected or already has a bot, okay, and it can easily spread to the other computers as long as they are connected with one network, okay. So botnet is just one, but if you already have two, or three, or four, or five, or ten computers which is infected, we call that one the zombie already. So. It's a group of compromised computer or device, okay? And the bot is the application or the program that performs a repetitive task on a network. But let's say that this one spreads uh, the application itself to the other computers, okay? such as sending by email or spread virus and other malware, okay? So here's how to recognize if your computer is functioning as a zombie. So as you guys can see right here, we have the bot master in this the uh, creator of the application. And then he uploaded it or he sent it on the one computer of this public internet. So just, you know, this is where more, where more, where most of the people uh, get a virus, okay? Uh, people who's connecting to a public internet like literally free, there is no even pass free, but it's most likely you will uh, get a virus or a bot or any malware. okay? And then this computer is connected with other two, okay? So as I guess can see right here, uh, just one is infected at first, but as time goes by, okay? So the other two will get infected and so on and so forth. And then it will infect another people and then it will infect another people. Then as time goes by, maybe everything will get infected. Why? Because they are uh, under one uh, network only. Okay. They are own. Oops, I have a question. Is there a trick lang ba ng bot master yan o nagkakapera sila? So that depends. Actually, uh, planting a bot on our computers will not uh, give them anything. They will just. Uh, Maybe they will be able to 
uh, access your computer, read some of your documents, see some of your pictures, etc., etc. Okay, and then if they saw that there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, important files on your computer, so maybe uh, they will send we will send a rootkit. Okay, just by using that uh, botnet, we will send another application to your uh, IP address, wherein we will gain control to your computer, and then they will lock your computer. And then they will now ask some uh, amount of money. Okay, so that's where uh, they start to earn some money. Okay. So we're going to tell you uh, removing a virus is uh, not that easy. Okay. So especially again. <laughs> If you're using a crap version of antivirus, okay, as maybe 10% helpful, but the 90% is just, you know, uh, give you more risk to have more virus. Because then again, it might have a backdoor. Okay, so it's not easy. So we got a Tor browser decoupling. Yeah, you're still not safe even though you're using a Tor browser. If you really wanted to be safe, if let's say you were diving into the dark web, so you must use uh, a Tails OS. So Tails is another operating system. So what we're using right now is Window, uh, Microsoft Windows, Windows 10, Windows 8. Uh, we even have Linux, but uh, yeah, we are okay. But Tails OS is the one that is the most safest. Tails OS will not record any uh, data on your computer. So in that case, you are 100% safe. So Tails OS plus Tor browser or Onion browser is now like 99, maybe 95% safe. Yeah, Tails OS is free. So just search for the internet and how to install it. So this is quite the same with Linux. Okay, so they are free even open source. How about VPN? So yeah, you can add that one also. So Tor plus VPN. Well, actually, Tor is already a VPN uh, application. But adding another VPN will add a more encryption of your a real IP address. Okay. Plus Tails OS. So even though, even though they were able to track your real IP address, but you're using the Tails OS, you're 100% safe because as you close your computer, it will erase everything. It will erase uh, all of your tracks. I uh, no, no. So we are in line with open source, like Linux, Kali Linux, uh, Tails OS. Uh, we have a lot of uh, open source applications. So they are not crap. They are completely free. And they are completely safe. Okay. Actually, the one that is more... Uh, at least is the Windows version. So Apple, so they're still good, okay, since uh, they have a different uh, language operating system. But for uh, Microsoft Windows, uh, they already have a lot of ways how to uh, go inside uh, Windows 10 or Windows 10. So I can po suggest kung ano magandang antivirus na. So when, when it comes to free antivirus, uh, Norton. Norton is one of the best that I have experienced so far. But in fact, you'll get pissed because, you know, it's super strict that it won't let you uh, go into a specific website wherein it, you think that it's safe, but under Norton, it's not really safe. Okay. So, yeah. One of the antivirus that you could trust is Norton. Okay, just look on the internet how to install Norton. Well, I still advise you guys to uh, get the premium version. In that case, you'll be more safer, like 95% uh, safer. Okay. And then one more thing, if you're going to, if you're planning to use a VPN, again, do not use the free version. Aside from you know it's super slow, it might also have a backward. Wherein the or yeah, as you are using your VPN, the, the uh, admin of that uh, call that one admin of that VPN might already have your 
a real IP address. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So let us now move on to the next one. So we have here the DOS attack or DDoS. So DOS attack is just one PC who's doing the assault or attack. So when we see DOS attack, this one is not really that harmful. It's just that, uh, you know, one PC can uh, log in, let's say you can log in 10,000 accounts on one application. So why do they do this one? So they do this one because uh, they want to bring down a certain server. Like for example, uh, there is this new game, newly created game, okay? And then of course, you know, availing, availing a database, which let's say a large database on the internet is quite expensive. So of course, it will start with small database for now. So let's say as it's starting to uh, advertise uh, his application or game, it will start uh, low and then it can only accommodate, let's say, uh, 5,000 users for now, okay? And most of the uh, people who wants to bring down a certain server will use a DOS attack, okay? So DOS attack is just uh, a, a computer or a software wherein it will log in, let's say, up to 10,000 accounts. But your game is only limited for 5,000. So what will happen if that reach the maximum 5,000? So in that case, you know, the other people who will log into your game will not be able to log in, and then they will keep on receiving error. And then as time goes by, since your game already consumed 10,000 players, but it's only one uh, PC, okay? It's not even a real player because he's just trying to bring down the server of your uh, application, then yeah, that would be a disaster for you. Okay. So he didn't destroy your application, he didn't install any uh, virus, but he just bring down the server of your application. Okay, so DOS attack is an application that can uh, keep on uh, call this one, keep on uh, having a uh, be the proper term that keep on accessing okay so if it's a website it keeps on accessing so uh the uh loads that is coming or the traffic that is coming to your website is really really uh stressful so in that case you're going to have a slower server etc etc so there's a lot of uh, side effects on that one anyway so yeah, that's it for DOS attack. And then if we have multiple computers doing an attack, we call that one DDoS attack. Okay, let's say we want that to bring down a big company. Okay, but DOS attack and DDoS attack is not that famous nowadays since you know, just by using a firewall is, you know, DOS attack cannot be executed anymore. Right, so we don't have enough time again anymore. So we'll just continue the rest on the part. So again, just check uh, the link right here on the Zoom links for synchronous class meeting dash four. Okay, I'll put here the part four link. All right. So goodbye for now and see you guys later. Hey, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.